Hi, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a state of the market video. Today is July 17th, 2021. Before we get started, this video is for educational purposes only. This is not a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. And I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. All right. Um, first day back from vacation. Uh, doing this video at least. Uh, it's about two weeks since I've done one of these. So let's see what's happened in the markets, starting with the SPX. So here we go. Um, big nasty day. Uh, the last really few days, if you look at over here, you know, the last four days have been just kind of, you know, sellers have been in control. But we, you know, we, we've pierced through the nine day EMA, but we haven't even gotten to the 23 day yet. So it feels really bad, but technically there isn't a ton of damage done yet. Um, first level of potential support is 42.58 ish area. I think that's an area to, to watch. It's not too, too far away. Let's see what it is. It is. Yeah, only 1.6%. So this is an area I'll be watching to see if it offers any type of support or not right here. Um, looking at RSP, which is the equal weight. Now the equal weight looks a lot different, doesn't it? It never broke out and now it's rolling over. So that's really interesting actually, right? So SPX looks great. And that just shows how the mega caps work probably hiding the distribution that was going on. RSP, not nearly as good. Let's move to the Qs because I think um, that's interesting too. So we talked about, just go weekly, I guess. Let's just go monthly. Make it easier to see over here in the monthly chart. So I basically put fibs from high here to low here, right? And um, and just to see where it it kind of showed up. And so 368 was the area that um, that I was watching. And for now, it seems to be a place of importance, right? So do I think that this is going to be the top? I don't. I think that, um, you know, I mean, obviously I don't know that answer. Um, but I think it's an important area for sure. Um, you know, we got almost right to the mark, just a smidge below it, three points below it. Um, and now it's giving it some, some, some trouble. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, areas that I think it could potentially go to, you know, again, this area right there, which is around the 342-ish area, which is... You know, another uh, four four percent or so lower. I mean, that would be an area I'm going to be watching for potential support. Because remember, longer term, the trend is still higher, right? So this is just you know maybe one of these type of scenarios. Who knows? But it's it's um you know, and if you think about it, if we do get over here and this holds to three forty two, three forty three, it's just a higher low. Right. So within the context of a larger uptrend again, so I wouldn't get overly bearish yet based on, on the index charts. Um, no, there can be more downside. And it could feel pretty rough because even these days for the growth names have felt really rough. But again, if we get to 34, 342.50, that is just a higher low in the big scheme of things. And we're still in the higher, high, higher, low uptrend mode at this point. Um, let's look at the equal weight just to see how that is different. Okay. So here's the equal weight. And again, it looks a little bit rougher, probably because the mega caps have been, have been leading and, and outperforming. So, uh, under the surface, it's been, it's been harder, harder, uh, to trade obviously. And, and to be honest, I mean, these last four days, even five days have been really, really tough on the markets. Move into IWM, again, never broke out. It's still in a range. And as it comes down, again, leading to the downside, we'll call it, 
you know, this 210-ish area is going to be really important, I think. And we are almost there, 2% more or so, roughly. So we'll see what happens once it gets there. But I think if it breaks below 210, I think that's a problem. I think it's a major, main, major, major problem. Uh, so that's on the IWM. This would be a serious top. I mean, we've been doing this topping pattern since since January, basically. Um, so yeah, so that's one to watch. You know, it may be your first clue. We'll find out. Let's look at the IWO. IWO looks a lot like the IWM. Um, this is again more of a growth ETF, right? Small cap growth, uh, and same same situation. On here, it's going to be we'll call it two eighty one, two eighty two, somewhere in there, uh, maybe two eighty ish, and it's not that far off. Now, you know, it's, what two and a half percent, and so we'll see what happens when it gets here. I expect this to offer some at least initial support, right? Because in the end, we're also getting kind of extended from these moving averages, right? You know, three, four percent away from the moving averages. I mean, they've crossed, they're both turning down. So we'll see where this leads to, but it is kind of, you know, we're starting to see some white space here. And so I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you get one more thrust down or something into this area, and then we get some type of rebound. Now, no one knows after that what's going to happen, but that's what I would kind of expect. Some at least initial support here. Um, you know, but there's a decent amount of distribution showing up here on the tape. I mean, that's IWO. All right. Going to financials. You know, they topped out here in June. And as of right now, they are, yeah, they're, they're not doing that good. <laughs> you know, they are... Um, you know, bearishly aligned, starting to move down. Uh, you know, how far do they go? Nobody knows, but could they come all the way down here and retest the, the initial breakout? I mean, it's, it's possible. I, I have no idea if that's going to happen. But at this point, you know, we're looking at more of an indicator than as a tradable asset. And it's just got a bearish alignment to it at this point. SMH. False breakout right there, turned over, has that little waterfall type look to it back in its range. That is, um, that's a scary look right there, right? We don't like that on volume. So we'll see if this continues lower. It's got almost got the bearish cross going right there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a bearish alignment. You have no way to spin that. Looking at lumber. We came here, tested the initial breakout. It popped up, right? And now it's rolling back over, right? So lumber is usually a leader. It may be foretelling what's to come. You know, a lot of our markets are kind of like in this area, right? And you see it got to its initial support, bounce, then rolled back over. Now, we don't know what's going to happen at this point, and we don't know if this is foretelling the future or not, but um, but it could be. So we'll see what happens if Lumber gets back down to this 83, 84 area right around here. You know, you know, look at the RSI. You know, maybe it gets back down to this area and makes, you know, a divergence, a bullish divergence here, and just, you know, holds the support, and we go back higher. That's a... That's a high pop possibility right here, right? Because the long-term trend is higher, um, but we'll see. But this is definitely, you know, as it comes back down to this area, we're watching to see if this prior support and resistance area holds tight or not. It looks like, you know, it's close to it. It looks like it wants to retest it. And again, it's within that 3% range. Um, but yeah, but a lot of indexes look like they're over here. And again, if they hit this area, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bounce going higher and then maybe a retest, and then we'll see what happens. It could break, it could hold, we don't know. But that's what I'm watching. Uh, let's go to the next one, which is, let's look at bonds. I mean, so 
the 10 year yield is rolling over. So the 10, 10 year bond is going higher. Um, and looking at TLT, you know, we have this important area right here. I think, you know, if TLT breaks out above 149, 150, I think that's, you know, the bearish, the bearish scenario, right? When people are piling into bonds, that's, that's usually more of a safe asset. Looking at the bond ratio, I like to look at IEI HYG, switching to a line chart. Um, yeah, so it's not a gigantic spike, right? And so we could be in a situation like back here and back here where this, you know, kind of goes higher and then rolls back over. You know, we're not seeing these giant moves like in here, but it is starting to, you know, made a higher lows trying to make a higher high. Um, so it's definitely something that I'm watching, you know, especially going into next week. You know, if we get a look like this, that gets me much more bearish and cautious and everything else. Um, if we get a meander higher like this, it's kind of choppy, um, you know, and then rolls right back over, then that's obviously the bullish case at this point. So I'm not overly bearish because of bonds. But now, okay, we made a higher low, trying to make a higher high. Let's see where, where it ends up, right? You know, even if we take out, you know, this 151 area, I, I get it. Because, um, you know, we took out important areas back here, back here, back here on its way down. So this could just be another, you know, higher, um, lower high. But it may not be too, right? It could you know, look like this. So we got to watch it. Basically, that's the answer. You know, it's it's got it's got the makings of potentially a thrust up, which would be very bearish, but it's not there yet. The VIX, VIX is still kind of low. It's only at eighteen point four four. It's nothing, nothing too crazy, right? Um, all right. Well, maybe that's complacency. You know, who knows? And the, and even the Vixen, which is the um. NASDAQ volatility index, again, nothing crazy here. So, you know, maybe some complacency still in the market. Looking at put call ratio. All right, so the put call ratio, equity only. You know, it did get a little bit more bearish, a lot more bearish, but it's not an extreme yet. So again, I think that plays into the complacency role. Um, you know, once I see it get above this 1.4 level, that's, you know, potential buy signal. Uh, and, and we're not there yet. So it's got a lot more room to go, a lot more, maybe, you know, another thrust in the bearish side of things before maybe, um, you know, we start nibbling at the market again. That's put call ratio. Uh, value line geometric index. So we were talking about this divergence. And it finally did break and it broke to the downside and it kind of, you know, confirms the divergence and we're going to go to, well, I mean, the 600 ish level, that would make sense. And let's just see where that is on here. It's another seven, eight percent to the downside. Maybe who knows? Um, but yeah, this was, telling us of the weakness and breadth in the market and how it was being held up by just a few names. Again, we so we saw this in the RSP versus SPX and the equal weight Qs versus the NASDAQ. Um, you know, they can, the, the, the big index was moving higher while the equal weight was going lower. And again, value line geometric index, they all are telling the same story, right? They're on the same page. That breadth was weak and things were um, under the surface, not quite as good. As they may, as the index made them look. Again, I think the six hundred ish area is going to be important. Um, we could stop before then, but um, somewhere in here would make sense a retest of the breakout, and then we'll see what happens if it makes it down there. Um, see if any spikes in gold. You know, gold is like a slow motion. Who knows what it's going to do, right? As of right now. You know, not actionable for me. Um, you know, seeing a huge push into gold at all. It's just building up this potential consolidation type pattern. You know, again, it's just a no touch. 
and let's look at let's look at some different cryptos. Uh, Bitcoin. There we go. Let's look at Bitcoin. So, what is Bitcoin doing today? Oh, it's right there. Look at that. So Bitcoin being one of the biggest risk on risk off indicators, in my opinion, uh, you know, it's right there chilling out at what, 31, we'll call it 400 ish. And it keeps holding this area, which is, I guess, bullish, right? But the more times that it keeps knocking at the door below, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, somebody recently told me, it's kind of like uh um, you know, iced over lake. And every time you you hit the ice, you know, it's a greater chance of it cracking. And I think that's uh, a good good analogy for this. So, you know, and every spike up has been met with selling. And in each spike up, you know, buyers come back in, there's less and less of them. Soon the buyers are not going to spike it up anymore, probably. And this is going to roll over. Um, you know, with... A lot of people are watching this 20,000 area, you know, I think 25,000 and then 20, those are the two big areas I'm watching. Uh, but, uh, but Bitcoin being as a potential risk on risk off indicator, it looks like people are exiting this, um, right in this 31,000 area, but we will see, we will see what happens there. Let's see what else we got. Um, let's look at MMFI, one last thing. All right. Again, this shows percent of stocks above the 50-day moving average. We're down to only 30% of stocks above the 50-day moving average. That's obviously a very small number. Um, I like to look at areas in this green section as potential buy scenarios. That means that things are really overbought and you may be able to either play for a bounce or maybe a bottom. Uh, we're not there yet. Uh, not that far away from it either but not that there yet. So another kind of spike down that may lead us into this green area. We will see. Um, again, that'd be a place maybe to try some small positions. Right now, my, personally, I am about 90% cash. I have a small short through the um, SQQQ. But beyond that, I'm just gonna sit on the sidelines and wait for better setups to come up my way. I mean, so everything is set up to be bearish. And a lot of people are bearish. I think there's a lot of complacency because the buy the dip has been, you know, working for a very, very long time. I think longer term, you know, things are looking, things are um, are still in an uptrend. You know, again, if we break a b below this 340, 335 to 340 area, that would be a, a, a different, you know, game changer because... You know, that's a major, major top right here, potentially. You know, and again, look how vertical this was. So, you know, retest of this area would make sense. 343-ish, I don't know, somewhere around there. Anyway, that's what I'm watching for. So I think short term, the market is bearish. Longer term, I think the bull case is still intact. Um, you know, if you're in cash, I think it's a good place to be. Maybe tactical short for, you know, another day or two you know, let this flush out a little bit and um, get, get you know, turn the tide with the put call ratio. We'd love to see this put call ratio get into this 1.4 area. That would be like ideal, right? Throw some real fear into the market and uh, yeah, throw some real fear into the market, right? And, um, and, then, and then we could rip higher, hopefully. Anyways, good luck this week. Glad to be back. Hope this helped. Um, you know, any comments, leave them below. I will try to um, I will try to get to all of them. Hope you all have a great week this week. Take care. Be safe out there.